The samurai lived to die a beautiful death. In this life philosophy of the samurai lies the typical mind of the Japanese man. He seeks after truth through the sword, the soul of the samurai, and cultivates his heart to be as sharp as the blade. These are the stalks of the rice plant, the staple food of the Japanese. They are bundled together and dipped in water for three days. On the fourth day, they are taken out and dried in the shade. The bundle has become softened to the same stiffness of the human neck. That it can be cut with a sword means that the human neck also can be similarly cut. There is no end to the perfection of swordsmanship. The swordsman is often racked by solitude and mental agony, but there is no escape from constant practice. The sword easily cuts through the stiff bamboo, which clearly implies that the sword can just as easily cut through human bone. Yo. What urges him to practice kendo? Not even he himself knows the answer. He only knows that life itself is a constant struggle. His desire is only to live life purely and with sharpness, like that of the sword.
By his very nature, man indulges in pleasure. Yet these same pleasures can help one forget the agony that goes into the training of Budo. Such a sway of mind is not permitted to the trainee of Budo. Enjoyment of pleasures only means the negligence of practice. One must remember constantly that Budo is a struggle with the mind. Budo teaches that all comes from self-control. <coughs> When the agony of the mind is not relieved, they turn to the teachings of Zen Buddhism. But Zen too, like Budo, is limitless. One should aim at perfecting his ability to face pain, suffering, anguish, and the disappointments of life. Thus he will attain inner peace. Zen has neither a philosophy nor an ideology. Through rigorous ascetic training, one can hope to achieve enlightenment. Here one is freely beaten in order that he might rid himself of self-deception and see clearly the merciful love of the Buddha. Although one may try to calm his mind, it does not come easily. He cannot attain mūt, the state of nothingness. There is no way to perfection but through patience and effort.
The Japanese sword shows its fearsome characteristics hidden in the blade, only in the hands of the user. The sword can cut a man's neck in just one hundredth of a second. This is the shocking one hundredth of a second. The Japanese sword is born of the incandescent flame. It has been endowed with life to kill. Its blade holds the power that manipulates the destinies of men. The swordsmith earnestly strives towards the sharpness of the blade, while at the same time with a prayer that his sword will live in peace without the shedding of human blood.
by instinct, man attaches himself to life when faced between life and death. Should he adhere to live, he betrays his desire to die a glorious death. The mystical sword watches life in silence. In Japan, there is a maxim that the life of a human being is the length of the sword. The swordsmith engraves the knots of life. Time changes a human life. A certain swordsman, having mastered the art without losing his life for half a lifetime, learned in time that he should never draw the sword, not being cut by an opponent and not cutting another, defeating the enemy, winning over his own mind. Such is the spirit of the Japanese sword. He has understood the truth. Only when his mind accepts the inevitability of death at any moment can one truly understand that the sword should never be drawn. Through the severity and cruelty of the training, one arrives at the truth of Budo, to live life in peace without violence. It is only at the instant separating life from death that the spirit of Budo becomes crystal clear.
As long as the universal truths of heaven, the earth and man remain, the spirit of Buddha shall endure.